Today, we are sponsored by NordVPN. Protect your data and personal information online right now. Choose from over 6,300 NordVPN servers worldwide and get access to your favorite content wherever you go. We can give you a 30-day money-back guarantee to check out this product. But the most impressive element for you football fans is this. Using the geolocation change, you can sign up to Satanta Sports today. This costs $3.99 a month, okay? And when you have it, you have access to the Premier League, Champions League, La Liga, Formula One, the UFC, and multiple other sports broadcasters, leagues, everything. It's absolutely amazing. So not only can you protect yourself online with NordVPN, you can get access to football and other sports so, so cheaply. So check out NordVPN now by clicking on the link in the description or scanning the QR code on the screen. Ain't no genius. Look at the state of Kai Havertz, you donkey. You should be in a zoo, mate. You're a giraffe. Useless. Absolutely useless. One of the worst 45 minutes. <laughs> Curtis Shaw here, absolutely raging. And listen, I think one thing we saw yesterday from Arsenal, which I think is undeniable, they have become a potent, dangerous, a worrying team for rivals in terms of can they win. They've become far more competitive with the absolute big boys of Europe. But the one thing they've got to add in the summer to continue along that path they're on is more star quality. And I think that shone through in the Champions League. I wouldn't necessarily speak about Kai Havertz in that way, personally, but they need to improve that front line in the summer. They're, they're linked to the likes of Jokeris as an example. I think they've got to look at really bolstering that area, but I'd love to get your views and opinions on that. By the way, smash the like button, people, and leave us your comments below. But I love listening to Curtis Shaw. He's amazing. Talk about Bakayo Saka tonight, bro. You get me? Now, I know he's been carrying an injury throughout the season, but bro... If you're fit enough to play, I need to see a lot more from you than what I'm seeing, blood. Vax, I'm someone that believes Saka's carrying something. There's an issue there. And yes, Arteta's picking him. And yes, the medical staff are clearing him. But Bakayo Saka is also saying he is okay to play. So you have to take responsibility. If I say I'm well enough to go to work and I go to work and I put in an absolutely terrible performance, I've still declared that I'm healthy enough. That is still on me. Responsibility is needed. I agree 100% with, with troops there. You get me. Phil Foden performed in the Bernabeu last week, bro. When Man City needed him, he stepped up and he delivered blood. We needed you tonight. You didn't step up. You didn't deliver. I'm going to have to get on your back now. No, did he? You understand? Because it's been <laughs> happening far too much, blood. You get me? I don't know if you're using this limp as a as a decoy. You get me? Because you understand? You're moaning at the referee. You're not um, trying to attack your man. Y you are not yourself, blood. You get me? You, I'm not going to lie. You need to be dropped, blood. We're getting to that point where you need to be dropped, bro. You get me? Because... I, I listen, I, I think I think there's so much merit in, in, in what troops is saying here and whether you think it's bad form an injury you think he bottles this stage of the season it doesn't really matter on the reason the one thing that should never be a guarantee for any football player maybe barring Messi or peak Ronaldo is that your place is not under jeopardy that you cannot be dropped that the club can't try something else that is a listen everyone knows I've, I've praised all the elements of Arsenal that I think in the last two years deserve to be praised but let's have it right. Let's have it absolutely right. Nobody should be undroppable in this Arsenal team. And he isn't performing right now. Playing him through this form, whatever is leading to it, also isn't working. So I think Troops is onto one here. And I think there needs to be some real honest questions for, for Arsenal to go from where they are, which is a very good team, challenging for the Premier League, getting to Champions League quarterfinals, scaring up rivals left, right and centre. To get to that next level now, there needs to be real hard scrutiny. It's nitpicking, but it's those fine margins of improvement that get you over the line. And I think Troops is absolutely, absolutely spot on here. Hi, how are you doing, boys? <sighs> Josh, how Josh, are you feeling? Night, mate. Josh, how are you feeling? <laughs> Bad uh, not, week. Not, not, not good, not good, not good at all. Um, I've, been, I've been saying this since last season. I'm saying it again. Our test is a fraud. 
was a bit harsh, mate. Oh my. What does fraud mean to you? I hear it thrown around a lot. It's a bit of a buzzword. We're going to hear it from this guy. What does fraud mean to you? If you think Arteta is a fraud, explain what that means. And don't just say, hasn't won a major trophy. Explain what you mean by fraud. Deep it for us in the comment section. No, That's no. cool. No, no, no. He's been there, what, four or five years now. He's not won a single thing. We've been yeah, playing the Champions League, Champions League quarterfinal against Bayern Munich, who are not at their top form at the moment whatsoever. 15 yeah. points behind by Leverkusen. And it's just, he's bringing on Eddie and Ketia. Like, these are the kind of things you need to look at pre, like before the season even started. We've got... That element, that element is true, I think. And um, a lot of people called that out. And I think keeping Eddie and Ketia, that new deal. And this is the thing with any manager. You can look at Pep Guardiola. Everyone says the greatest current manager. Some say maybe the greatest ever. Allowing Carl Palmer to leave. Signing Nunes. Signing Kovacic. These are mistakes. Managers make mistakes. And I think those elements certainly should be called out. In fact, he hasn't won a major trophy. You could call him a fraud. Depends, I suppose, whether or not you think he's ever going to get over the line. But yeah. Saka's not, Saka's not playing well at all. He hasn't no, been good for the past again, month right? and a half. Yeah, way off it. And it's, I'm just like thinking that like, Arteta just needs to get his, get his head out and just like actually think about what he's going to do with the team. You wouldn't I want him out though, would you? No, I do actually. You want him sacked? I don't, I don't know who we'd bring in, but like, I want him gone. Yeah, that's the only thing I would say to that. I don't know who we'd bring in. I have no idea who to bring in, but I want him gone. And Arsenal fans need to be very mindful of wanting that. And I'll tell you as to why. If you can, I hear a lot of Arsenal fans say, sack him and get me Zidane, sack him and get me Simeone, sack him and get, him, get me Ancelotti. Those managers ain't coming. It's very well publicized Zidane don't want to come to England for love nor money. Carlo's not leaving Real Madrid for Arsenal. The Simeone is very well publicized and documented. He doesn't want to leave Atty for anyone. So you, what in your manager sack for those, man for those guys... It's almost one of two things. You're either not reading the, 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 the information, so you're deluding yourself, or you know you're not going to get them, and it just enables you to be angry at the replacement as well. If you want Arteta out, my challenge to you is think long and hard about who you believe will genuinely take you to that next level. That's that's a fair... I think it's a fair challenge. It's a fair challenge, in my opinion. But Gunas, let us know how you're thinking and you're feeling this morning. Nice. Best teams in, in the world going up against each other. It couldn't be separated. Is it just down to those small margins? Goal here, there. Well, to be honest, today I saw only one team. Stop uh, it. Get some help. It is, uh, today I only saw one team. Do you know what? Pep Guardiola plays a, 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 a beautiful style of football. In fact, I want to listen to a little bit more of what he says, then I'll come back. But uh, yeah, in terms of defending... They defend and they knew how to suffer. Um, and yeah, of course, we know how, how tough is Real Madrid. Uh, but in my opinion, we should go through in the terms of chances, everything. Uh, but they should have gone through in terms of chances. And I'm glad he said that. So I want to listen to a bit more. Only one team showed up today. No, listen. Carlo Ancelotti is not a manager that has a kind of regimented possession-based system like Pep. He's a bit more old school where there's a good structure in and out of possession, a good defensive structure. But there is a little bit more, I'm going to use it, there's a little bit more freestyle about it. It's a little bit more creative freedom for the midfield and the attackers. So I'm not surprised their approach against Pep's team was to absorb a lot more of, of, of the ball, especially at the Etihad, okay? They had to do that. But it's either that only one team turned up. No, both teams turned up. They just had, both had different approaches to winning. This idea that just because you sit behind the ball, you're not trying to win, is crazy. You are trying to win, but you're trying to win in a different way. And I think that we've become too obsessed in football with everything looking the same way. I'm not. I, I, I'm not, never have been. Maybe it's because I'm a little bit older. But the, the, the irony is, people that are jumping on this also are the same people that criticise everybody for trying to copy Pep's style of play. But then you'll see like an Ancelotti performance like last night and everyone's like, oh, it's terrible for football. Well, what do you want? Everybody playing the same way or some difference? You can't have it both ways, my old muckers. Talk about this on the podcast, Goldbridge Saves Football. Make sure you're listening to that for all the real good insights additional to this. But I have said, Premier League's not the best league in the world. Oh! Oh, we've created a juggernaut. We've created a mess. 
where we have the best brand, we have the best exposure, we have the best publicity. We're not the best league in the world. We're turning into the French League with one team that's going to win six out of seven. The newly promoted teams get relegated. And now in the Champions League, we haven't got a team in the final four. Um, and, and we haven't got a team in the final four because we're not good enough. New we were good enough this year. That, that, that bit's absolutely spot on. I think from, from my point of view, when it comes to which league is, 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 is best, again, better and the best, I think, we're, I think there's cross debates going on here at the same time. I think we're the best league because it's the most watched. It's the most coveted. It's the most spoken about. It's the most, you know, th therefore it's the most exciting and engaging and ironically entertaining, which a lot of people say football is about because more people fluctuate in to watch it every year. Is it the best technically? Probably not. Pro probably not. But I don't really care about that bit. Castle and Man United went out in the group stage. Arsenal were beaten fairly by Bayern Munich. And Man City can moan all they like, but they weren't good enough to beat Real Madrid. And they'll be... And do you know what? I like what Mark said there, because they are moaning a lot, Man City. And I know they're not used to losing. And you've seen Rodri moan there. But they, they did kind of bottle it, Man City. They won't get labelled as bottlers because they're not habitual bottle jobs. But they did kind of bottle it. They led twice. In the in, in 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 the tie, they dominated at home, had an abundance of chances and opportunities. But barring KDB today or last night, no one turned up. Like nobody turned up at all. Like no one. Harlan dead. Silver dead. Grealish dead. Doku in fact came off the bench and looked pretty good. And now they'll say, "Oh look, the play was good and this movement and this." But what did they deliver at the end of it? What I always talk about in football, I don't really care how it looks. If there's no delivery, pointless. Pointless. It's fur coat, no knickers. Now, they're not bottled off by nature. They're an amazing team. But last night, City messed up. They can't handle it. But I want to go back to Mark's other point. What does that tell you about the Premier League? Let us know uh, in the comment section below. Oh, oh. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. Why, why be last night I'm watching Champions League and I see two guys that I could do with right fucking now go and playing out there and balling out getting their team into the Champions League fucking semi-final. The pressure. The pressure. Well, I look the at this team and I look at this team no, and think, no pressure, this pressure, is man. fucking... Look, look there's no there. pressure, man. Pressure. What the fuck pressure? You know what pressure, 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 pressure is? You know what pressure, 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 pressure is? You know what pressure is? Come on. I'm not... I'm not I, I saw this clip and it, it got me thinking. Big up the boys on the show as well. Uh, I, I know a lot of them, really good lads. I, I look at it this way, right? Sabitza and Sancho, it's great. Happy for them they're in the semi final. Genuinely, like, well done to them. I, actually, I've said last night I want Dortmund to go on and win it. So, from, from my perspective and point of view, though, this is what's going to happen when the clear out begins. Whether it's Sancho, whether it's Bruno, whether it's Pogba, whether it's... By the way, nobody wanted Sabitza. Maybe some of the guys on here did, but nobody was saying, oh my God, we've got to sign Sabitza. Most people leave Man United and do well. Okay, we saw Damian and Lukaku and Ashley Young pushed out the club because they weren't good enough. Go to Inter, win a league title, and, and so many people revised history and went, oh, we shouldn't have got rid of them. Look what they're doing elsewhere. Smalling left, and everyone's, oh my God, he's in that team of the year in Serie A, we shouldn't let him go. And this will happen with the current crop of players. So, you know, McTominay will join a West Ham and he'll ball out, and everyone will go, oh my God, look how good he looks. There's an element of horses for courses, but there's also an element of our club is toxic, and most people fail. Most people go backward for different reasons. And I think we can, and I have criticized Sancho, I criticized the bits, I've criticized Pogba, I've criticized Rashford, I've criticized Bruno for individual things they do wrong. But my overarching view the whole time is the club is the problem more than the players. Doesn't mean the players shouldn't be moved on because a change is as good as a rest. Getting fresh faces in is easier. Doesn't mean you shouldn't get a new manager. I think fresh faces are going to be easier. But this is what some people are going to do in 18 months if Rashford is sold, when he's scoring loads of goals for PSG or Barcelona or he's doing well. If Man United are also not doing well. So back in my younger days when United were challenging, it didn't matter who we got rid of and how well they did. We were doing well, so nobody cared. It's only when you're doing badly that you're hyper-focused on the people that leave your football club. So I, I get where uh, Nordin is coming from here. Prepare yourself for some more of this, potentially.
if Man United don't get back to challenging for Premier League straight away next season, which is very unlikely, this is what will happen. Man United don't have a squad full of absolute wretched football players. We have a, a group of players who have been absolutely damaged by the toxicity at our football club. It's as simple and as straightforward as that for me. But I did love this clip because I just thought to myself, I've seen this said for a decade now. I've seen these rants for a decade. And I can't wait for the summer rebuild. Listen, people, big up yourselves for tuning in today. Uh, check out NordVPN. I, I did say in the we did say it in the intro. Very important to protect yourself online. There's no doubt about it. We can give you a 30-day money-back guarantee to try it out. But get yourself signed up to Satanta Sport, okay? Change your geolocation to Ukraine or Kazakhstan or I use Moldova quite a lot. Look at all of this you can get for $3.99 a month. Literally all of that in the, in the UK where I am, to have access to all those channels on your TV, you're looking at over £250 a month. $3.99 a month and you get it all on Satanta. Listen, until next time, people, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again soon.